at this point, it sounds like on some of the dirtier days in the winter, it can be as uh, as dirty as in the summertime. Yeah, that's right. On some days, Toronto's cold winter air could be worse than in the summertime. That's according to researchers taking part in Environment Canada's study of winter air pollution in Toronto, or swap it. The campaign, one of the largest of its kind, conducted in the city with multiple research teams spending six weeks last winter collecting samples from all across the city. This is where we make most of our outdoor measurements. So this is also one of our main instruments. And we have all the outlets that we use to like suck air from outside and make the measurements like indoor here. Daniel Prasad is a PhD student with York University, one of the groups participating in the study. He says now the time has come to crunch through the data and adds the common notion of summer air dirty, winter air clean may take a big hit. Because during the winter time, we have this thing called a temperature inversion where pollutants are trapped close to the surface of the earth. So when this happens, you can actually smell exhaust fumes, either whether you're inside or outside. And you can, actu you can actually see this temperature inversion if you're really high up as a thin line across the horizon. Can we, uh, can we take a look at some of the equipment that you've got set up sure, over here? Sure, sure, sure. So we have two types of samplers here. The total deposition samplers collect everything. So wet deposition, dry deposition. The automated samplers only opens when there is a rain or snow event. Is it is it collecting rain? Is it collecting atmosphere? It's collecting rain or snow. And then and then what happens? Does it all get stored in the box and then you open it and collect? So it collects into these jugs. We think some are dirty because we remember smog episodes, especially when there was a lot of coal-fired power plants. Elizabeth Gallardo, an Environment Canada research scientist, tells us the Swap It campaign was also used to test new tools and techniques hopefully leading to improved computer modeling. She adds the data could also help to pinpoint sources of some of the pollutants and how they interact with each other. So what we did was piggybacked on existing infrastructure as much as we could. So there are some long-term monitoring stations that already exist. We also added some temporary stations. They're really trying to fill in to get measurements at, at different locations to understand the variability of the pollutant mixture across the city, not to just have one or two stations in an urban area but really understand uh, how pollutants are varying from neighborhood to neighborhood. Researchers are expected to start sharing data within the next couple of weeks with a full analysis for next year. At York University, David Zura, City News.